took about two and a half hours all to make up. They gave me these huge traps, right? And it was funny because I used to work out in Venice Beach. Everybody said, were you taking roids? No, it was makeup, fool, you know. <laughs> Heat. Our problem is take the bank or split right now. Do not go home, do not pack, nothing. 30 seconds flat from now, we are gone on our separate ways. That's it. Michael Mann did a film in Folsom Prison. It's called the Jericho Mayo. And he made friends with my uncle, my uncle Gilbert. He won't admit it, but he paid my uncle Gilbert sag wages for the three weeks that they were in Folsom. And Gilbert kept everybody in line. And so uh, when I showed up on the set of Heat, and it was funny because he saw me and he said, hey, Gilbert. Like, no, not me, Danny. And, but he kept mistaking me for Gilbert. And he changed the script three times. He gave me three different names. And every time he changed the names, changed the whole script. So a lot of trees went down, you know. And uh, finally, he came up to me and said, Danny, you know what? Every time I look at you, I think of your Uncle Gilbert. Is it okay if I just call you Gilbert Trejo in the movie? Said, yeah. My whole family cried because Gilbert had died. You know, he OD'd and died since before then. And, uh, so if you note my, my name in the movies, Gilbert Trejo. I can try to dump him again. How are we going to know if you did? If you didn't, you'll throw him to us. F. Ventura, pull him out of here. All right. Hey, I'm sorry, man. Last thing I want to do is let you down. I wasn't supposed to work that day. First AD called me and said, Danny, you know what? You have to come down to the set, blah, blah, blah. I said, hey, homie, it's my day off. I said, would you please tell Michael Mann that he owes me big time? So I showed up in a sweatsuit and a, and a sweatshirt. I was, and he says, okay, that's good, that's good, leave there. And that ring that you see in the movie, my kid wears that now. And it was funny because when we were going to do that scene, Robert De Niro says, uh, how do you want to play this? I don't know, Bob, what do you think? And he just goes, you know what, I think you're almost dead, Trejo. I think they almost beat you to death. And you've just got enough to beg me to kill you. For a split second, I was, ah, Bob, I don't think I, I think I'm a little different, but <laughs> it's Bob De Niro. <laughs> I, you know what, hey, just what I thought, yeah, great. You know? And so we did it like that, and it, it was an iconic death scene. But my daughter still can't watch that scene. And I said, what's your true? How come? You, you seen me dying from dusk to dawn. My eyes went in the pool pocket. She says, because that's the way you were supposed to die, Dad. You know, that's the way you lived. And I thought, well, yeah, I guess you're right. You know, so. Con Air. Usted es el famoso criminal, amigo. <laughs> See, this is Juanillo 23. Con Air is funny because they put all the wannabe tough guys in a plane in Hollywood. And because lunch turned into a big, who's got the biggest huevos? You know what I mean? Just because they were like, if somebody spit, somebody else would, then pretty soon everybody, it was a spitting contest. If you did a push up, everybody tried to do more push. It became a big contest, right? And, uh, and they tried to bait you into things. This ain't happening. Not here, not now. What's oh, happening? Hey! Relax, he's right. Not here, not now. Do you fly, Johnny? They had no. Benny Yukitas, who was, you know, five-time world champion kickboxer. John Cusack. You know, people don't know it because he looks like a wimp, but John Cusack can kick ass, and uh, Benny's his sensei. So they had a dojo set up. I grew up with Benny's older brother who taught him Karate, you know what I mean? And uh, he says, you know what, Danny, you're like my brother. First of all, you're not a good sport, and you don't get along well with others. So you don't want to, you know, you're going to end up, you know, <laughs> socking somebody, so. Blood in, blood out. I loved that movie, and I loved what it did for the uh, Latino community, showing that because Blood In, Blood Out showed three main characters. And, you know, one ended up a police officer, one ended up an artist, one ended up in prison. I read Taylor Hackford's script, and I knew that it was a movie, not kind of like a documentary. It was funny because the cast, they were all like trained thespians. Every time I'd come around, they'd start talking about like, like 
Juan Strasberg or, or somebody, you know, a play or, that they'd done or something. And I never did any of that shit. You know, I just showed up and started working. And so uh, my friend George Perry uh, said, hey, wait till we get to San Quentin. We got to San Quentin, it like, it changed. There's nothing scarier than when you walk into San Quentin Upper Yard and you got 3,000 convicts on this side screaming about how pretty you are. Most of that cast was pretty, you know, and I looked around and they were all like, just kind of like close behind me because they seen that I knew what was happening here. And then uh, some of the, the actors learned that it's all about respect. Everything is all about respect. I love it when you walk on a set of a movie and they're portraying convicts and everybody's like, yeah, pushing everybody out of the way and being tough and being me. It's not like that. I had to pull a couple of people aside and tell them, hey, look, Holmes, I'm not Hollywood, you know? Because people, like, actors, like, try to stay in character. You know what I mean? And, and if we're playing prisoners, bad guys, and we're at dinner, or we're at lunch, hey, pass the salt, man. You know what, get your mother to pass the salt, fool. Who do you think you're talking? You know, it's like, uh, I don't talk to people that way. Well, would you please pass the salt? Beto, sígalo. You know, if you're a killer and I'm a killer, it's best to say, hey, excuse me. And, and you know, if it, if it comes to something, well, then we kill each other. But we don't want to get there, you know? So really, prison is probably the most polite place in the world. But, you know, step out of line, he'll kill you. Desperado. Hey. When I went to cast for that, I, I, I walked into Robert Rodriguez's office in Venice, and uh, his words were, wow. You remind me of the bad guys in my high school. And uh, yeah, what do you say? says, I am the bad guys in your high school. And so he just handed me a knife. He said, here, twirl that. And I just started twirling it. And I got back to my house and I asked uh, my agent called and said, what happened? I said, I don't know. He gave me a knife. I got so good with that knife, just twirling. I walked on a plane with it. Keep this up and it's going to be over. And believe me, it's going to be over real quick. Oh. Robert Rodriguez gave me a compliment one time, and he said, you can say more with your face than most actors can say with a page of dialogue. That's a hell of a compliment, you know, and, and it's funny, but that takes practice, because like in San Quentin sometimes, I think you got to be able to say, hey, I'll kill you without saying a word. And so once you master that, people seem to stay away from you because they're just not quite sure. Antonio Banderas was Spanish, and Spanish has a very elegant dialect. And we're in Mexico. You know, we're in, in Acuna, Mexico, which is a, a little border town. And so a lot of people didn't gravitate toward him there. They, everybody gravitated towards me. And I was signing autographs and taking pictures. And, and uh, everybody said, take off your shirt because of my big tattoo. And Robert says, hey, they think you're the star of this movie. I said, you mean I'm not? My uncle was stopped to, to visit. You know, they came to visit me. And, and my uncle kind of said, hey, who's that? That guy, you know. I said, that's Robert Rodriguez. He's the director. And I remember he goes to Robert, hey, and he goes like this. And, and I'm that's the director. Look at but Robert, being Mexican, you know, when an older person calls you, he just, he just showed, he came and showed up, you know, respect. And, and they start talking, and then all of a sudden, Robert says, hey, I mean, my uncle said, hey, say hello to your cousin. You know, I found out that Robert Rodriguez was my second cousin. I didn't, so I immediately said, Okay, let's make my part bigger, cause you know, you know we've done like 13 movies together. Right there, you know what? This is a movie that I want to do, and he ran down Machete to me, and I, yeah, we can do that. That'd be cool. From dusk to dawn. This bar is for bikers and truckers only. You get out. From dusk to dawn, I stole the movie, man. The movie was so real, it's like you couldn't help it being real. And then George Clooney was unbelievable. Uh, he was, that was his first movie. God, man, five, six years later, I, he did a film called uh, Up in the Air. And I just went to the premiere. I just, and he starts screaming, you know, Trejo, hey, come here. And he starts, he starts giving him my report. You know, hey, he was in my first movie, man. And I'm like, Oh, this is George Clooney. <laughs> <laughs> 
Goodbye, kids. Machete. He will turn around. You will leave my shop. Because I never want to hear my brother's name mentioned again. You're our uncle? A real uncle? Because we are a fake uncle. Gregorio Cortez is my younger brother. Five, eight, six year old kids are still watching that. It's timeless. I mean, I had six and seven year old kids in the airport wanting autographs, signed at Uncle Machete, you know, so it's like it's still gone. They needed trailers for Grindhouse and they needed fake trailers, so we put a we put Machete in their trailer. If you're gonna hire a machete to kill the bad guy, you better make damn sure the bad guy. When we walked out of the theater, everybody just said, we have to do that movie, so. And if you notice, everything that was in the trailer, we just put it in the movie, so. It the first Halloween after a machete, I'd open the door to give kids candy, and a, a lot of the Mexican kids were dressed as machete, you know, mustache, and they see me, and hey, machete, and it was like, it was just kind of, Kind of cool, you know, it's like we had little Mexican kids that didn't have to be Batman or, or, or Superman. You know, they were like machete, you know, so it was kind of cool. King of the Hill. Hank, my marriage is falling apart. I'm so unhappy. I don't know what to do. You're the only one in the world I can turn to. Okay, then. I'll see it work. The guy that did it, Mike. Judge. Judge, right, Judge? Yeah. Well, he made the Native American guy, right? He put a tattoo on him like this, and the tattoo was exactly like the hat that I've got. Okay, I'm going to need $20 now, and $20 when it is done, and another $20 for expenses. So I said, all right, <whistles> Judge, because he came on the set of uh, Machete, and I said, okay, hey, Judge, check this out. You got my tattoo done, does that? Give me like residuals or something, you know? And he goes, no, 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 I'm, I got you a character. So the next week, it's like all of a sudden the character was this guy named uh, Enrique, right? I played on that for a while. Hank Hill is my best friend and I work for Strickland Propane. Hank, it's Salmon. They put Salmon in the fish tacos, Hank. What are you talking about? Look at it! It's Salmon! They're ruining everything! So it was cool, and I met uh, Brittany Murphy, and she's the one. It's like, what's good about voiceover, you can show up in pajamas. You have done matter. She used to come in with fluffy slippers, and it was like, you did, you know, makeup, you just do it. Rick and Morty. There is no freedom while your leader breathes. Our country is a prison. Then Katarina is a prisoner. Perhaps I could arrange her escape as well. She lives, Jaguar. Where is this pickle? You know, like, I really don't watch Rick and Morty, you know, and uh, my son got me to do that. And I, they were asking me to do it, and uh, Dad, you gotta do everybody. I did that, and it went viral. My son, he just got into the DGA for directing, and uh, He's been directing music videos. He directed me in a film called From a Son that hasn't come out yet, but it's the only movie I've ever cried in. Badass. There's two seats in the back. Take them, but leave him alone. Badass, I did as a favor. Remember I told you, everything good that's happened to me happened as a direct result of helping someone else. They had me up for this film that was paying big dough, okay? And then Badass came along. Well, you know how they say one in the hand is worth two in the bush, so anyway. But my agent, Gloria, kept saying, Danny, this is gonna turn into something. Turned into a trilogy. I did Badass, Badasses, Badass on the Bayou. Made four times the money I was gonna make on that one. But on the first one, I met a director named Ash Shaw, who had been in the restaurant business. And he saw that I, I like eating good food. I won't eat, you know, the Jack or the Mac. I'd always bring a little salad or I'd bring something to, to eat that it, and he said, why don't you open a restaurant, Danny? 
Jokingly, I said, Trejo's tacos. You know, I just thought TT would look great in diamonds. He brought me a business plan. I gave it to Gloria, and she kind of said, this is a no-brainer, Danny. This is the first time somebody wants you to do something. They're not asking for 100 grand up front. So we got four restaurants right now. We're opening up one right now in Detroit with a venue like House of Blues restaurant and stadium next to it. It's a wonderful binge. Hey, ah! come with me if you want to binge. At first, I didn't understand it. And I said, well, wait a minute, because I didn't see binge, right? So I said, this is like the reverse of It's a Wonderful Life. That was a lot of fun. Just it was freezing cold. We're under a bridge, and it was already freezing cold. Who are you, man? I, I'm Angel. Angel? Like, like you're my angel? If that's what you want to hear, kid. Now, what's your problem? We cap on each other. He starts saying something, and I go, Wow, you know what? You'd be really pretty in the pen. And he, he wouldn't know what to say. <laughs> he, so, so he kind of stopped challenging me. <laughs> Breaking Bad. I love that. And you know what, in Tortuga, it was received so well that read another one and called me back and did the first part. When I was in London, these guys came up with this tortoise about this big. It took three guys to carry it. It's huge. And they said, we'll give you $500 if you sign it. Oh, you got it. So I signed it, Tortuga, and then, you know, hola DEA, you know, and, uh, and made myself 500 bucks. <laughs> hey, white boy, my name's Tortuga. You know what that means? Tortuga means turtle. That's me. I take my time. Yeah, I remember that scene was awesome when I was sitting in the bed talking to the feds. <laughs> yeah, I'm slow, but I always win. I'm <laughs>